All right. I was Hello, just preparing everyone. the live. I'll, I'll give a brief intro to Design Buddies first. Preparing the live. All right. Let us wait for Zoom to prepare the live to YouTube and we'll officially get started. Yay. Cool. All right. Welcome, everyone. Thank you all for coming for recipe for sweet UX case study with Design Buddies. I'm Grace and I founded Design Buddies back in April 2020. Um, to make some design friends. It's since grown to over 12,000 buddies, so I'm super excited to be here. Um, design Buddies, if you guys are new to Design Buddies, it's an inclusive design community where anybody interested in design can hang out, share resources, ask questions, and make new friends. And throughout, and I'll also drop, um, for, this, for this event, we'll also have a networking sheet where you all can plug your social media and LinkedIn to connect with each other during the event. And then I'll hand it off to Kelly and Sarah. And then at the end, we'll take a group photo and a group way for our Instagram story. Um, and so yeah, super excited. And I'll leave it to, I'll leave the floor, open the floor to Kelly and Sarah now. Alrighty. Hello everyone, thank you for coming. Really, really happy that you guys are all here today. Um, we have a lot to share with you and yeah. I'm Kelly, I'm a UX designer and a graphic. Um, design as well, and I'm based in Seattle. Um, Sarah, you can take it away as well. Okay. Hi, <laughs> I'm Sarah. Um, welcome, everyone. I'm happy to just meet everyone here and to uh, just to chat with you and engage with you. Um, what about me? I am a product designer and currently a UX design intern at this, um, I guess, um, app that I'm working on with um, Canadians. Um, yeah, and so, yeah, I'm happy to be here. Oh, I'm based in Richmond, Virginia, East Coast. Yeah, so um, I guess we can go ahead and get started. Um, Kelly's going to kind of take like the first half, and mm -hmm. introduce more about what Boba UX is and how it all started. So Kelly can take it away. So yeah, me and Sarah started um, Boba UX as a way for us to like kind of share like our experience with UX and our journey. And so today we're gonna to be going over like uh, UX case studies. And so I'm gonna share my screen on a presentation that we've both created. So let's see. Alrighty, excellent. All right, so yeah, the title of our um, event today is Recipes for um, a Sweet UX case study. Just trying to click through. <laughs> and so this is like the overview of our event. Let's see, we got, so we're gonna start off with like an introduction um, and then we're gonna share a recipe for um, a case study and just some tips and resources and case study reviews and then a little Q&A at the end. And the, again, this is um, just a little bit about us, um, Sarah and me. And okay, so getting started, um, a case study is the story of your project. So we're really gonna dive in into like how to create a case study, how to set it up and what all goes into it. Okay, so some case study ingredients. So usually we start with like for a case study, um, I always like to add like an introduction um, to talk about like my role in the, in the project and who's involved and how long um, the case, the project took and what problem we're solving. And then on the next part um, is the journey. So like the research, the iteration and testing and solution. So this part is really important to like save like artifacts that you collected along the way for a case study. So for me, like I know Sarah might have a different way to do this, but like I like to use Notion and I would gather all the my artifacts and drawings or iterations and put it on there just to have it all saved and to look back at. All right, and then um, a conclusion. And so that's really like a reflection part and the outcome. And kind of like what we want to do um, differently next time. All right. And I believe Sarah would like to do the next part. 
Yeah. Um, so, so before we share, just shared the ingredients. So now we're actually um, going to kind of like go over the steps of a recipe. Um, so first we want, you want to outline the parts that you want to include. So at this point, like, it's kind of like when you first like write, um, let's say you're writing like a short story, you kind of want to have like the general outline and the structure and elements that are important to the story that you want to tell for your project. Um, So I recommend doing that first. Um, Next one. And then after you kind of solidified the outline and the structure, you should write one to two sentences for each like section and subsection. Uh, You don't want to write too much, but you want to provide enough context so um, that the reader can like understand like why you took the steps that you did and like any anything like interesting you learned and any takeaways that you got from like a certain step. Um, Number three. And then you want to revise, edit, rearrange. Um, You'll probably be doing a lot of that, like moving around and cutting things out. Um, You don't want to make your case study too long, but it's okay if it is, as long as you can make it um, scannable. Um, But yeah, definitely you don't want to throw word vomit, a lot of word vomit in there. So anything that you feel like that you want to take out. Next. Uh, Number four, insert concise, meaningful headers that highlight each section of the case study. So uh, what I mean is to provide like a little more context in your headings than just like calling one part like user research and then wireframes and then mockups. Like that just seems like you're kind of just like throwing deliverables uh, without like much context unless someone like reads the paragraph underneath. So if you can include you know, headings that um, kind of, I guess, like highlight or summarize uh, the section uh, below. That's a lot more helpful and more scan. It makes your case study more scannable without having to read like every single bit of text. Number five. And then I, we both suggest to add images last. Um, Of course, like, like Kelly said before, uh, you're going to have like all your images and uh, the prototype, all your visuals like ready beforehand. But I suggest like kind of writing everything out first so you get the structure before you add the images in. Um, And uh, one other note is to avoid like any visuals that are a bit text heavy. I've seen that on some um, portfolios and it just like kind of blends in a lot with like the actual words in your case study. So if you can, sometimes it's a lot easier to read if you um, insert some of that like data as like say bullet points instead. And it'll make your uh, page load faster too. And so uh, now we have some like case study tips and um, some like general tips for when you're actually working on the project. So some do's is to keep a design journal, um, document important findings, things you learned, changes made, and the reason why. Uh, Save and organize artifacts as you're working on the project, like Kelly said. Um, Personally, I'm old school and I kind of just save everything, screenshot everything and put them into different folders, but I am like getting really used to using Notion. So that's a great approach. Um, Make sure to focus on your own role and impact on the project. Uh, Have a good balance of visuals and text. Um, Definitely not too much text and definitely not only visuals. Uh, And then reference supporting research and data points, because those are really important, like key metrics, uh, any like research uh, findings that you, you know, that you made along the way. Um, Make connections back to your users and the why, uh, and practice UX when actually designing your case studies. So always remember like who your users are, like who you're designing for. Um, Yeah, next and some don'ts, it's much shorter. So um, don't wait until the end of a project to start documenting because you'll forget. Unless you have eidetic memory, then you'll probably be fine. Um, Don't force in every UX deliverable under the sun. Like really you wanna have a reason for um, choosing like the UX tool, whether it's doing surveys or interviews or usability testing, like 
um, I guess like that's one thing to keep in mind while you're actually working on a project too. Um, you don't want to, yeah, just um, look at other portfolios and think, oh, I have to include that on my case study. Um, really, you really want to have a purpose for it. So um, moving on, don't cram in too much text like we mentioned. <gasps> no, <laughs> not yet. Okay. Uh, and then go to the next one, I think. Okay. Uh, yeah. So don't cram in too much text and don't display only visual materials. Um, don't use design jargon. And I guess I would design jargon, I would say terms that maybe people wouldn't know who isn't like a designer or someone who's outside of the design community. Um, I can't think of any examples right now. So that's a very good question. Um, well, we might have to come back to that unless Kelly or Grace, you could think of one right now. Wizard, <laughs> maybe. Okay, and then don't, yeah, buzzwords, like keywords that, you know, that you would only like see on a design, UX design resume. And don't like teach or try to lecture UX, you know, you just want to explain like the story of your project. Cool, moving on. Okay, and then we wanted to kind of share some uh, resources that we found that were helpful. So we're definitely gonna share a link to the slide since um, it's all online. So you don't have to worry about trying to screenshot that and trying to like write that down. Um, but we just wanted to show you, there are tons of articles out there, but I suggest like not reading all of them, but maybe taking in like, one or two and just kind of um, get different perspectives. Um, and tools, like we said, um, Notion is awesome for documentation organization. Um, apparently on Skillshare, there are some videos or tutorials on like design and case studies now. So that's really neat. Um, I'm subscribed to Case Study Club. They have uh, newsletters that they send out, I think like monthly, but um, they also have a website where they have like different articles and um, you can't go wrong with Google Docs, you know, if you're in a crunch. Uh, next slide. And then some extra goodies. So I uh, kind of made a template for um, just like this event on Notion. Um, so you can grab that. Um, I'll also paste the link into the chat um, when I'm not talking because I can't multitask. So yeah, you can feel free to um, copy it and paste it or use it as a template for yourself. And then I also found a really cool case study like presentation template um, in the Figma community. Uh, so I linked that as well. So that's really helpful if you um, ever need to like present one or two projects um, on like during an interview. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's that. So yeah, now we're gonna, Kelly and me are kind of gonna collaborate and do some like live case study reviews. So we received two so far. Um, yeah, I think maybe Kelly can kind of take it away. I'll, I'll join in, but if you could um, sh like link those so that yeah. I can share the links to the templates. Yeah, I can do that. Um, just give me a second here. I have the link. You want me to share it on the, the chat, everyone? So we can all look at it or should I share my screen? You can share your screen so we can see what you're referring okay. to. All right, I think Grace is on mute when she's talking to me. <laughs> oh, she and I said the same thing at the exact same time, but I think we're both muted. I was saying we, you should share your screen so that we can okay. see what you see. Okay, excellent. Yep, all righty. All righty. So yeah, I got um, a request via de Design Buddies today about going over a live case study. So if Grace and Sarah can also look over this with me, that'd be great. <laughs> um, so I just picked one of the, the projects here, uh, Party Room for YouTube Music. So we can go um, through it and look at it carefully and then we'll go back to the beginning and just really give out some tips and points. 
point is. So let's see. So I like, so far I like that you have like a preview of like the screens on top. I think it really like gives out a, like an overall message or vibe of like what the, the project is about. And let's see, so scrolling down. All right. So yeah, so this is really like the timeline and duration that I've mentioned earlier. Like this is great so that we know like what your role is in the project and the duration and the tools that you use, which is also great. And let's see, and the project type. Yeah, That's I, I like that. The top. Oh, huh? yeah, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Oh, uh you can go first, Grace. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Um, so one small comment I have is on the top, I would keep it to one sentence only. So in uh, my case study, I have like, how might we like solve this problem and just keep it at that because it seems like a paragraph to me and you can describe all the details below um, like the section we have like my role duration because when hiring managers are scanning through, they wanna know your role in that project and like what tools you use. Kind of like they're scanning through like resume, like a checklist style. So it's gonna keep that that like viral duration part really easy to find up top first before you're diving into details. Yeah, I also um, think that the summary up top is kind of long and because it's all in bold, it might be like a bit like hard to read or get the important points. Mm -hmm. um, I do like that they put the product type in there. That's not something that I see. And it's interesting to kind of get like the fast version of like what the product is. Um, I think... I had one more thing. Oh, um, if I'm not sure if they kind of explain it like later in the case study, but if they could provide like uh, whether this was a solo project or if they worked with a team, like kind of like who they worked with, um, that would be like great to know too. Ready. So yeah, plus one to talking about how who you worked with and additionally how you worked with them. For example, collaborating with UX researchers or PMs to uh, write tasks for usability tests and how you guys work together because that's part of like the behavioral aspect of the interview too and things they ask a lot um, mm -hmm. during my experience interviewing. Yeah, very important. Mm. So yeah, this next section um, for me it feels like there's a lot of there's a lot of text. <laughs> Um, kind of like the beginning. So maybe like simplify some of this because like Grace said, like when when people are looking through case studies, they're, they're quickly scrolling. So they might not have time to read out everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it doesn't like seem so. I, yeah, honestly, if I didn't have that much time, I would just rediscover and define and then that um, bolded sentence below. Mm -hmm. But I would probably not read the two smaller paragraphs or small text paragraphs but I think um, at least like on first look but if I'm considering this um, designer then I would probably go like do a deep dive into what they actually say but I mean honestly I don't like mind it too much it's not like too too long but we'll mm -hmm. see what the rest how the rest of the case study looks hmm. mm. Yeah, it's, I think it's interesting. Um, it is like a bit more text heavy, but I do like that they have um, some sentences in bold. So yeah, we could I kind really of concentrate on those. Yeah, I mm -hmm. concentrate on those ones. Yeah. I like the imagery mm -hmm. too. <laughs> yeah, I will say, um, I guess because we kind of are doing like a high level view, I didn't really get a sense of like what the problem was. Maybe I'm, I just didn't pay attention enough. I love all these little illustrations. Yeah, I love the little illustrations. Yeah, they're really great. <laughs> I, I do like- yeah, I would definitely, oh, go ahead. Oh, no. Oh, I was going to say I do like the illustrations, um, but I guess like they do relate to, I guess, like the corresponding paragraph. Um, but yeah, it doesn't like really it, it, it. The image doesn't like tell me like what like the problem is. But I am seeing now that they're like kind of listing some of the problems with the current app or the current product. So that's good. I would also shorten this text to focus on just the main problem. 
um, instead of having to explain anything over because it's kind of really not very scannable and maybe align all the images to one side because when the reader goes down, their eyes jump from back and forth, back and forth, um, which can be um, more effort for the user to scan through. Yeah, it can be tiring on the eyes, definitely. Mm -hmm. I like that they don't just say, here are the personas, but they kind of made it more interesting and in saying like, meet Eric, the general music listener. Um, but I will say, um, I know this is like probably a screenshot of uh, the persona, but uh, that is a very text heavy um, image. And yeah, like yeah, someone... depending, yeah, depending on the screen size, it might not be readable. Yeah. Well, for me, like, it's really hard to read. It mm -hmm. might just be because I have terrible eyes. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, me too. Like, I have to get a little bit closer to my computer. Yeah, I would probably pull, pull like, the main takeaways and, I guess, like, the most important, like, um, points about, like, that particular persona and, um, put like, throw it into the case study and maybe have a link to uh, the actual persona mm -hmm. instead. And another suggestion I would do for visual aspect is to make the persona like the style of the rest of your case study because it looks visually, it looks in the font, it looks really disconnected from the rest of the case study. Oh, uh, yeah. Portfolio. Yeah. Heading down. <laughs> the challenge. Sorry, I'm like quickly <laughs> reading through this. Me too. Mm. Okay, that is a very interesting mm -hmm. challenge and something that could be really helpful to solve. I think Spotify has been trying to solve that problem. Yeah. Uh, these are really nice illustrations. I will say yeah. again, it's um, a bit small. Mm -hmm. Maybe but I do like plugins. Oh yeah, go ahead. I do like that um, compared to this illustration and the persona, like I feel like this is more I don't know, like in line with the rest of it. Like it feels like it's a part of the whole case study because the, the persona is like they're kind of disconnected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, it is. Parts of it is kind of hard to, to read. Were you guys going to say something else? Yeah, like something's yeah, was... on like Webflow, there's like light box you can use. They can like enable that as a component and you can like, click on the image and we'll like zoom in for you. So if you guys use Webflow, that's like another widget you can add. Right. Yeah, I think um, UX Folio also added light box if I'm not mistaken. So that's definitely a tool that is really handy for stuff like this. Mm -hmm. Great suggestion. So now we're moving on to the, the user, user flow. User flow. Very detailed <laughs> user <Wow>. flow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, very detailed user flow. It's like, oh. That must have taken so much thought. Hmm. I would maybe break this into sections. Like this is onboarding. This is like the home screen. This is like this feature yes. and like have little boxes of where each section is because it looks like a lot and it's kind of hard to follow, but having it organized yeah. and divided into sections would be having, will we make it easier for it to understand and have a clear idea of how each part relates to the whole product and the whole case study itself. Yeah, I agree. Um, think about it as if like you were kind of guiding, guiding your friend um, through the user flow and like kind of getting a snapshot. Oh, this is what happens here. This is what happens here. Yeah, I like the quotes. Yeah, I like the quotes mm -hmm. too. I like how yeah. the, the setup. It's cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. 
I yeah, this this looks interesting. Um, one comment is I'll just add an add an annotation. So whenever you have like text, always like point it to what is describing. Um, so users and people can scan through and know exactly what that block of text is is specifically um, referring to in the screenshot. Yes, same thing here too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, notice some questions in the chat too. I'll try to okay. answer um, the questions in the chat. So yeah. Okay. Let's see. I love this part. I love how I love the animation. Because mm -hmm. yeah, the interactions like, are great to show. Yeah, um, interactions are great. Mm -hmm. Not just how it looks, but how it interacts. Mm -hmm. I think it definitely adds another element to this case study. Mm -hmm. And we're at the conclusion. Nice. So that's I, reflections. Yeah, this is great. I would also include lessons learned because that's like something I've gotten a lot of comments on for my portfolio, including that as a positive thing. So lessons learned could be like, you learn this, this interesting phenomenon from user research, or you learn the importance of, you learn how to like better work with PMs, things like that. Like it could be like through the project or personal that you can mm -hmm. add towards the end to like add a really strong uh, finishing touch to your portfolio. Yep. And um, if it's like applicable, if you're going to, if this is like a project you're continuing to work on, then you can kind of like talk about like next steps or what you would mm -hmm. do differently. Um, I think like that's something helpful and kind of like relates to, I guess, like the real world and especially in an agile environment where they like do, you know, retro retrospectives. Mm -hmm. But cool, great work. That's yeah, actually, actually yeah. an interesting project, and I kind of want to like know more details about it since we only did like a quick scan. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. Due yeah. to the amount of a lot of portfolios submitted, let's try to keep it about five minutes per portfolio so we can get to as many people as we can. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen <laughs> for this one. Um, so there's one more portfolio or case study that we're going to review, I believe. There's a lot more in the chat that um, people okay. submitted. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, Sarah, do you mind sharing your screen this time? Yeah. Um, let me get to the other one that um, someone sent through Discord, and then we'll try to get through as many as possible. Excellent. Make sure. Yeah, let us know. Are you looking for like your first UX job? Are you student? Are you intern? Um, yeah, let us know. I just recently converted to full time, so it's been exciting. <laughs> oh, this takes up so much room. Hold on one moment. All right. So, um, okay. I'm going to minimize some of these Zoom windows. All right. Okay. So, this is the next one up next. Okay, I like that they have like a very, very simple, um, I guess, like overview of what the, the product is, or what the website is about travel website. Wait, oh, Kelly, this is the same person. Mm -hmm. Let's look at this one. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized um, they requested like that specific case study before. Okay, cat metro design. It's a very interesting way they've kind of introduced um, like the introduction or project information. Just me. This feels um, very, I guess you would say, like I, I can see their personality come out. They laid out the problem and the solution. So I know there's like a debate about like whether you should add the solution to the top or um, save it for like the end near the end of the case study after they explain the process. Um, I think it really depends on 
like the audience's preference. Um, so I guess like that would be up to you whether like what kind of experience you want to provide for them. But it is nice to see like the problem and solution laid out really simply. Um, it was a redesign. Okay, I'm not gonna play the video. Um, yeah, cool. So they kind of provide the solution, all the solution, the prototype in the very beginning. So even though this is very wordy and there are not a lot of visuals, um, this feels really easy to read. Maybe because the We're words are so big. <laughs> Oh, I'd also ahead. pay attention to information hierarchy. Like, um, mm -hmm. for example, like the quotes look almost the same size as the header, headers, header line, yeah. um, header size and stuff. So I'd probably make them a bit smaller or like the same size as mem memorable quotes from my poll. Um, and maybe it's slightly different color. Just mm -hmm. think about like what's the sections and how you want to divide down the information and think about how you want to hire do the information hierarchy and don't have too many like variations and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, with like headers, you want to start big and then like kind of get smaller as you get to the body text. Cool. I like that they um, bro broke these like sections down um, so that we know like exactly like what they're talking about. Another thing you could do is add arrows to exactly where you're pointing yeah. at from those screens <laughs> to be even more detailed about it. Yes, so you can kind of direct them exactly what you want them to look at. A little bit um, text heavy there, because so just scanning this quickly, it just says design. So I'm not sure. I guess you're talking about like your design process right there. Yep, wireframing. I mean, I, a good solution to like help with that text heavy is that I prefer like bullet points because then it lays out like the important details as opposed to like one big wall of text. <laughs> yeah, there there is, I forgot the this actual number, but a high percentage of users prefer to read bullet points over like lines of text. Prototyping. Um, I'm kind of curious. I mean, I might have missed it in the word since we're only like looking at or scanning this, but how you got to from wireframing to like the prototype. Kind of curious how as to how you got there, like why you chose um, the certain UI and like the colors. Okay, so you kind of explain it there. Cool. And reflection. Hmm. The side note, I would probably include it as a reflection, not make it a whole different section because information hierarchy, again, it seems like a whole other section for it. And it seems mm. part of reflection. Yeah. Like maybe the most important reflection they want to highlight. Um, but it kind of, yeah, it looks like this is a whole nother section. Mm -hmm. I'll maybe bold it um, if you really want to emphasize it and feel like it proves a, a big point. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but great work. Uh, that was like not too long, but I, I think unless you're looking at this on your phone where it kind of like in your browser includes that like up arrow where you can kind of go back to the top of the screen, like that's like really nice to have mm -hmm. instead of having to scroll all the way up. But good thing this isn't like too long. Okay, um, let's go to the next one. Um, we will... Maybe have time for one more. Sorry, I spent so long on the first one. Okay, I don't know how to get back to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to get to the chat. Can you? I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. I'm such yeah. a noob. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, let's go with another one. Just click on a random link. That's. Yeah, feel free to drop your case study again um, in the chat if you want them to be reviewed. Yes. Okay. Whoever drops their... Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go with Tyrone. <laughs> okay. I'll share that again. Oh, okay. A lot of case studies. 
We're going to try to do oh. like three minutes each. Um, yeah, this or, one will be yeah, quick. even shorter. We'll go to 740. So we have two minutes and then like we want to have some time for Q&A. Oh, actually, yeah. we can look at two more because I think we scheduled it for 745. Um, mm -hmm. So, okay. Bootstraps. Building empathy through play. I will say um, this is a bit about yeah. Yeah, yeah. hard to read. I didn't um, see the building empathy at first. I only saw mm. the bootstraps. Do you highlighted it? Yes. Remember, you have to practice like UX design on your actual case studies too. So make sure that um, your everything on your website is accessible. Uh, a way I like to go about this is to add like a gradient that goes up, so it's like dark on the bottom. So it will show the white on top. Or if you can like kind of like have like a background, kind of like how you see some subtitles, like have like a darker background, like gradient or overlay as well. Um, yeah, I like that they have the steps here. I can tell this is UX Folio. Yeah, so I've used it too. Cool, nice. no problem. <laughs> I would explain what five W's and one H are because as someone who didn't does not familiar with UX Folio or any boot camps. It's a bit confusing to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I had to look at this to identify what, what they meant by that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Or we spell it out mm -hmm. in, the, in the title itself. Yep. So I like that they um, spell it out here. How might we statement? Mm. I'll say um, it's a bit hard to read because the yeah. sentence is kind of long. Maybe not um, italicize it or only mm -hmm. like bold or italicize like a certain word. Yeah, bold it because italicize kind of, it's like the, it makes it like incoherent or just like kind of disconnected from the rest. Yeah. Yeah. I like I love the stats. numbers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, again, this is kind of text heavy. So I don't know if how much like value it provides like for like this portion, I would kind of like highlight like the key findings um, or, or I guess like break it down into sections so that it's um, more scannable. I'm gonna go through this more quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely plus one centered in the chat centered align copy is harder to read. So just always yep. align left when in doubt. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Key learnings. Yeah. In general, I would try to try to use as less textiles and fonts as you can and try to doing emphasis that way. Like the header and the body text and stuff varying, like italicized boldness. It's kind of harder to follow. It's like less consistent throughout too. Yeah. So um, again, kind of the same with these personas. Uh, this could be a bit hard to read if just kind of curious what it'll look like in like a phone, like let's see how tiny it gets. So yeah, like that's when something I you want to keep in mind. When I'm creating my um, case study, like I, I do it on the computer, but then right after I would check it on my phone, check it on my iPad, check it everywhere just to see if it's um, accessible and easy to read. Yep. Yeah. yeah. You want to kind of design for like the smallest screen first, as mm -hmm. they say. Mm -hmm. Check if it's responsive too. It shows up the way you are, you want it to do. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Another thing to include um, or to like have, if you want to display like competitor analysis and all these personas, if you want to display all the information, you can either add it in the appendix section or bottom or like link it out to another page and just like sum it up on your main case study page. Yep. Okay, yeah, I would say, um, yeah, overall, I think I saw a lot of like text heavy um, visuals, so, um, maybe like rethink how you want those to be displayed or maybe break them into more digestible, like smaller sections. And of course, like pointing with the arrows, like Grace advocates. All right. I yeah, really don't know how to go to my chat 
box. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's like, it's weird. So you hover over like the yellow, I mean, the green and red thing. Green and red floating bar. Yep. When, yeah, yeah, and then- I got it now. Okay, yeah. Cool. <laughs> oh, you guys don't see the chat. Yeah, we don't. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> One more, really quick. Right. Mockups. I love the summary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good job. Looks like a really good video. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so overview, tools, role, team. For your mm. team, I just briefly saw, would maybe talk about what their role was. Maybe you did on the bottom, but I just see names that say like this person was a designer, this person was a researcher and just things like that. Yeah, we have no idea who they are. Um, mm -hmm. And I love how they put the problem here like this, like it's very easily um, findable. Good job there. Yeah, I would maybe um, break this up into two sections because it's a lot to take in all at once mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. arrows. Yeah, and again, this might be a bit too tiny. Yeah. Check for this. Mm hmm Oh. oh well, it's so hard to read. Please. <laughs> <laughs> please break this up into individual sections. Yeah, like each, each section could be like one section. So you have like six different sections on that. Yeah. And maybe you don't even like need because obviously like we can't see these post-its, but like maybe um, pick the most important from these sections and like highlight those. Cool. Oh, the images are hard to read too. Yeah, um, maybe like have like annotate like what, what these like sketches are because it's like hard to tell uh, what they are. Yeah, same thing yeah, here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Make these images bigger, break them up, annotate. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I like you, how you could like key insights to these are testing, how it's easily digest digestible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like how you emphasize on different points there in your screenshot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we can kind of like compare mm -hmm. the differences. Yeah, that was really great. A lot mm -hmm. of emphasis. Yeah, so uh, yeah, kind of like keep going with that, <laughs> this idea, this yeah. concept. Cool. And probably break key takeaways into bullet points and reduce mm -hmm. wording. Another mm -hmm. tool, another resource I would love to recommend is Hemingway. So Hemingway, make sure your text is readable by like sixth grade level. That's what you want to aim for. So always yeah. plug your text into Hemingway and making sure you don't have any run on sentences. Your paragraphs are not too long. And I'll link it in the chat too. Yeah. Hemingway is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And I will, I will say like having three columns divided like this makes it really overwhelming. Um, so like Grace said, like make this into bullet points and if you can, like make it into one column or at least two. Um, yeah, but again, love this like design impact. Great job. Cool. Okay, we're going to go into Q&A now. So I'm sure we missed like a lot of questions and like a lot of awesome discussions in the chat. Um, do, does anyone want to like raise your hand so we can unmute you and you can ask your question or you can um, throw it into the chat? And add, about 10 minutes from now, we'll take a group photo and a group away for our Instagram story. So make sure to stay on for that as well. And welcome to turn on your camera so we can see all of you on screen. So you feel like in the same room. <laughs> yeah, anyone have any questions or I guess an, um, an argument that you want to make about anything we talked about <laughs> or maybe like a contradicting <laughs> uh, statement that you read like online or what do you struggle the most when you're making case studies or like yeah working on your portfolio in general while interviewing 
feel free to let us know in the chat too. So we also know what kind of other events to host and design by so I know portfolio reviews is a huge one. Yeah. That and design challenges. Mm -hmm. very, very we actually cool. have a game jam coming up. Um, it'll be announced by tomorrow, the latest. So make sure to stay in touch for that as well. So we will have a team matching form where y'all can match with other buddies to make a game. And it will take place December 16th to 20, 23rd. Um, announcements coming soon. So put that oh. in your calendar. Yes, design <laughs> challenges. Fun. Yes, a game jam. No experience needed. We'll have a team matching form too. Nice. Oh, we have some questions. Great. Um, is there a max word count you don't want to go over or should you focus on breaking up big blocks of text? Yeah, I wouldn't say like there's like a particular word count that you should try to hit or try to avoid. Um, but yeah, I would say like, again, kind of like reiterating, like you want to just like try to make sure the um, when someone's looking at your case study to make it like as easily read like as readable and scannable as possible. So whether they can, they only have time to look at your portfolio for 10 seconds versus five minutes versus an hour, um, you want to provide enough context, but um, just be able to kind of like break it up so that everything's like if they want to dive deeper they can but if they just like want to kind of just like read over your headers they can kind of get the gist of what your entire project is about um, so yeah if you can like um, kind of convert things into bullet points or into like a numbered list when you can that helps a lot or as you saw and I think like the most um, the last case study that we looked at how they um, have like a block, uh, a different like color block, like a green block over like the white background. And um, that kind of like really made the statement stand out like the design problem and then their takeaway. Um, someone asked about like NDAs and how to publish the work. Uh, I just wanna say that um, I recently finished a project that involves NDAs. And the best way to go about it is to ask um, who's in charge to see um, which screens or which, yeah, which screens or which designs you can use. And you might have to like change aspects of it. So it won't be exactly, at least that's what it's like for me. So we couldn't use everything. We couldn't even use the MVP um, of it, but yeah, you're just gonna have to be very careful with that and check with someone, the leader. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So when in doubt, you should mm -hmm. ask. I've oh, also yeah. heard. This type of thing I've written. Yeah, um, I've also heard um, some people trying this method where they like don't use the ac any of the actual material from that project, but they'll kind of like change it, like change the name, uh, kind mm -hmm. of change like the, I guess like the specific uh, problems and solutions um, to tweak it so that they can still like use it on their portfolio and say that that's something that they worked on, but for NDA reasons, they had to, um, you know, um, they can't reveal all the information and what the actual product is. So I've heard that too. There's also different levels of NDA. Like for example, for me, um, I wasn't able to show all the real data. So I had to change all the data, but I also write a disclaimer statement and I can include an example of what I did for my EA internship one in the chat too. So that's like the disclaimer I wrote. So whenever you have NDA or work with a company, always make sure to include this, not only because it protects the company, but also protects you as a candidate. Because when hiring manager evaluating your portfolio, they, if they see someone like leaking like Facebook stuff and they don't see a disclaimer on there, they'll be like really sus about it. So um, <laughs> make sure to include that disclaimer statement in the beginning if you have to deal with any NDA thing in your case study. Um, another question I saw in here is like about iterations and how do you choose which aspects of it to feature in a case study. And for me, um, I tend to pick like one to two iterations. Um, I'm sure like everyone's a little bit different. So like kind of like a draft and then a mid, mid fi fidelity and then the high fidelity. So I don't know if uh, Grace and Sarah has something different to share about that. Yeah, it depends. I like to yeah. have, like I have in my example, um, like pros and cons and stuff like that. In order, 
like it's so you know like a double diamond thing where you like converge and divert so it's good to show that in like the iterations and weighing out pros and cons and really explain like showing out all the options like whether sometimes they show two sometimes they show three and choosing one and justifying why you chose one because it meets this like user goal or business need and tie it to uh, back to the whole plot of the story which is the user problem you're trying to solve I mean, I agree with both of you guys. It really depends. Um, it depends on the project, honestly. Every project is different. Um, cool. We can have a few more questions. We'll yeah. be taking a group photo in four minutes of our Instagram story as well. And the wave. Um, yeah, I have another. And the, wave, uh, and the dance. You can dance, you can wave, you can dab, um, but it will be on your Instagram story. <laughs> I will drop the link to her Instagram so you can find it later. That's so fun. <laughs> really have never seen that. <laughs> okay, I have I another question. After an event. <laughs> so I was like, continue to do it for the rest of Design Buddies events. I love it. I love your creativity. <laughs> um, yeah, I have another question. Can we add UX audits for different, um, different websites and applications that we did in the portfolio website? Um, I think... I mean, I have done a lot of projects where I've done like UX audits. Um, so I think that's like definitely um, one skill that you do want to portray. I just um, don't think that that should be like the only type of project that you put on your website. But I would definitely say that you you can you should add that to your portfolio. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming you mean like redesigns, like taking like the Spotify redesigns. Um. Yeah, I feel like one is great, but don't do more than one because one is great for like learning. Um, yeah. But you're also making a lot of assumptions in the company and their business goals and stuff. So yeah, there's like a lot of discussion around that in design ways, actually, whether you should be redesigning websites. Yeah, it's like definitely more, I guess, like, I would weigh that heavily as like a learning experience also and kind of to study how like different companies like design their websites and apps. Yeah, like Grace said, you don't wanna add more than one probably. What portfolio building sites do you guys like? What blow? <laughs> <laughs> student get 9% discount if you have student ID. Ugh, I don't have one. Um, I tried to learn Webflow, but then I kind of quit and just put everything on UX Folio. But I've also heard um, about this new one called Editor X. And I think that's like a branch company off of a big company, but I forgot what it, where it's coming from. But that seemed cool, like a little bit, I guess, in between, like less of a learning curve. So a little bit less than Webflow, but more than like your standard like template um, portfolio building site. Uh, Kelly, what about I use you? Squarespace. I use Squarespace, but I'm interested in using the one that Gracie uses. <laughs> Webflow. Even, yeah. yeah, Webflow or even. Yeah, I hear a lot of else. pros about it. Even if um, you uh, get a request from a client to build their website, uh, I heard it's like really, really helpful to use Webflow and you can like put it online and everything because um, the code should be all there too. What else? We have probably time for one more question. Um, I, feel like, I feel like my portfolio is a little basic. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't want anyone to look at my portfolio, please. <laughs> Just kidding. If you have any helpful feedback, then I would be happy to hear those too. Um. Do you have any experience with approaching nonprofits to do a redesign? Hmm. I actually I actually had experience with a nonprofit and I helped redesign their website. And it's really, it's just a very collaborative because you're working with a bunch of other people who are, you know, in the same group. And you're also working with um, the CEO and trying to be in his vision. At least that was my experience. So every nonprofit's yeah. a little bit different. It's a smaller, smaller group than like, like what Grace is doing with EA, <laughs> you know, like because that's a bigger, bigger company. But like nonprofits, it's very small and scaled. Yeah, um, I've worked on nonprofit with nonprofits too, but they always contacted me. So, or I kind of like 
um, they posted something that they needed like volunteers or help. So I'm not sure exactly how to go about approaching them, but I think to just to try to get in contact with people on the team and um, to uh, like network with them and like ask questions and show interest. And if they're like looking for help, then um, you'll probably, I'm sure come to mind. Um, yeah, that's like all the advice I can give on that. But we should, we should probably like go ahead and take the photo. All right, yeah. Grace. All right. Thank you all for coming. We're going to take a photo. So I'll give you a few seconds <laughs> to turn on your cameras. Um, and then afterwards, we'll do a group away for our Instagram story. So make sure to follow <laughs> us on Instagram at design.buddies. And I'll drop the networking sheet again where you can connect with all the hosts and everybody in the chat too and join Design Buddies. And right now, I'm just giving people a few minutes, a few seconds to turn on their camera. Uh, with our last minute we have together here and I'll drop the link again to design buddies and we'll be ending this with a wave so make sure to um, connect with all of us in a spreadsheet and join design buddies um, and you're going to start with a photo so static photo and later we do a wave so two rounds and I'll just follow my voice cue all right five feel free to like grab your bobas um, I have a mobile plush <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> oh nice real boba amazing Cool. Um, all right. Five, four, three. I have multiple pages on different devices because my device can't show non-camera people. So just, yeah, <laughs> just, just hold it there for a while. Um, five, four, three, two, one. All right. I'm taking the other pages too. All right. So now we're doing our group wave so we can dance. So you can wave, do anything you want. Dab. Um, you can dab, you can. Um... <laughs> like Jessica's different expressions. <laughs> I don't know what yeah, to do. Yeah, all right. Let me put this on our Instagram story. You can wave, dab, um, dance, <laughs> wiggle. <laughs> so stiff. <laughs> all right, ready, set, go. Woo, yeah. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I'm holding oh. up the wrong hand. I mean, I can't. All right, ready, <laughs> set, go. Woo, yeah. We. We. Have to tell us when to stop. All right. Yeah, we got it. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for coming. If Kelly thank and you. stay for a quick few minutes for a very, very quick retro, that would be amazing. Otherwise, thank you all for coming. You can join us in Design Buddies. We also have a portfolio review channel if you like more people to look over your portfolio too and stay stay positive and test negative everybody from the rona and have a wonderful beautiful day and connect with us on instagram to view our waiting story and join us on discord and connect with kelly and sarah from networking sheet thank you have a good night thank you everyone thank Bye. you yeah, thank you thank Bye. you